way to Geneva. I'm going to show you some highlights from the dance. Big up all the massive inside. Check this. Oh, I was going to say something there. Well, class, well, class, well, class, well, class, well, <laughs> all about Geneva with my man Busy P. You're going to see us later on. We're able to know us tonight, yeah? yeah. Alright. Big up. Yes, peeps, this is the Swiss airport. See all the Swiss chocolate over there? Big. Gonna try some of that later. Bless. So there with the man Dissa. Yeah? Dissa. Junglist Massive. <laughs> Le Zoo, Switzerland. Big up. Remark over there. <laughs> okay, peeps, so I'm in the hotel room. Give you a little quick tour. This is quite nice, it's fairly small, but it's just compact, just enough room for me. One person. It's got this sliding shower door. I don't know if you can see that. Toilet. You've got nice little TV. Samsung. Got some sort of temperature thermostat thing. Got a little cupboard here. Yeah, so you can see the little coffee. Got a safe there to keep your stuff safe. Yeah, that's about it. Got me a little bed. They put me down for a bit. Till a bit later, we can go for lunch. in the venue you can see nice scenery around us this is Geneva bless all right this is the spot check out inside the venue Good Okay, okay. <laughs> so this is the venue. Hello boss. Welcome. Welcome to the zoo mate. Looking good. Yo! Hello my friend. Hello, Welcome hello. Yes, yes, yes my man. Thank you. Mr. Joker record. <laughs> Finally. Yeah, my man. Finally. How you doing? Yes, yes. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Nice one, man. Nice to meet you. How you doing, guys? Yes, man. Nice one. Nice one, Thomas. Nice one, Thomas. Nice one, Thomas. Nice one, Thomas. Hey, bro. Yeah, nice one. Nice one. Nice one. What's up, man? How you doing? Cool. Yeah, it's been a couple of years, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'm talking with your faces. Still raiding yeah. the jungle. Still yeah. there, still jungle there. Jungle raiding. <laughs> At your service. Alright. Take a look at the DJ stand. So we're gonna check out the backstage peeps. Alright. Let's go. So this is the cool backstage, the VIP. Pardon? Said how are you doing? You good? 
Yeah. Yeah. And I just came off work. Yeah. I worked till five o'clock. Yeah. The train met Terry in Bern. Yeah. Straight here. Yeah. Had to have no a little something. Man. I had a little no rest for the week. That's it. Nice. Check out this cool tattoo, man. It's the almond break. Yes. Wicked, man. <laughs> yeah, bro. And this is the reason. The devil that made me do it, Mr. Yeah. Remar. <laughs> Wicked, bro. Yeah. And I had really, I, I had to show him. I had to show him this tribute he made me do. That's heavy, man. That's yeah. heavy. How long did that take to do? Um, that was like one, one and a half hours. Right. And it was done by Irie Ives, mm. the white guy from Delinquent Habits. Hey, yo, what's up, y'all? Checking in right here, Ives Irie from Delinquent Habits. That went on local representing the east side. Also, the block right here on dmd2.net. When you want to check out that good radio, check it out right here. East side of Sweet, you know what I'm saying? Painful? No. No? This, this spot is not as painful as others. Mm -hmm. This one, this one sucked more. Ooh. That must this definitely really up. suck mm. more. This yeah. is like... That's the most. The it's most a special thing. point. This is the high value. I think, I think... Yeah, that's that. Nowhere else hurts. Only here. Really, really. really yeah. Itches. It's like itches, it stings, it burns. What, while it's healing it itches? No, because you haven't got any fat skin in between. Mm. It's just like uh, the, the, the small skin and then you have the s s sinews. Yeah, the sinews from beneath. That's the coolest tattoo I've ever seen. It's the arm and break. The aim and break, man. The aim and break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> right. No space. It was like crowded. It was really yeah. packed. It was really packed. Yeah. It's one of the best sound systems you, you have in Geneva and it's really really famous this is like uh, one of those uh, venues when they do jungle or drum and bass nights yeah. they are packed yeah that's wicked man mm -hmm. what, what sort of uh, power is the sound system? This is something I don't know. Uh, we can ask the technician. Is that like a sound system that tours around to places, or what? Uh, no, this is um, this is a local a local sound system. But like uh, each year, mm -hmm. they reinvent the whole setup. Yeah. And for all the nights they host, they normally do special visuals. They build or create walls. Hey guys. Hey man. Hello. Are you right? hey. Hey. Blaze, I'm the one who asked for an interview. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. But not right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Salut. Ça va? Pas de choses? Enchanté? Non, c'est depuis euh, euh, la gravière. Ouais. La dernière fois. <laughs> yes. Qui sait combien... Blaze. Blaze, nice. Blaze. Combien de potence le... So what, what is, what's the majority of the music going to be tonight, the policy? Is it all jungle or...? The policy? The mu Not policy, but like, you know, all the DJs that are playing. Uh, is it all jungle DJs? They play music from the from their hearts. Yes, yeah. I think it's, <laughs> it's it's whatever you fancy. Whatever you want. Because but it's it's because of you the people will be down tonight. Because of you two guys, we are just hosting or trying to warm up the night for you. But this is something usually always goes and rolls with the jungle raiders. Are you playing the jungle then? You're playing. We're the jungle raiders. Right, yeah, okay, we can do. Playing. We can do mostly all styles except Nero. Right, right. What's Nero? What's that? Nero funk. What's that? Um, sort of Black Sun Empire. I've heard of Great. like Nero funk. You don't have to drink coke. You have apple oh, juice. Oh, look at that! Apple got, juice. Has this got too many um no, weird that'll, stuff in it? That's sweet. On a special occasion, man, I'll have a sweet drink, man. Yeah. Uh, dinner is ready, okay. so... Oh, let's get some food, mate. Okay. Let's get nourished. It's <laughs> a sweet potato. Um, okay, Remark, uh, next question. Uh, you say... Uh, you say in, in, uh, in the uh, interview like three years ago uh, that like back then you were like ex exclusively producing for yourself, mm -hmm. so you are just like playing the plates mm -hmm. and just producing the plates. Uh, I know you come from a reggae background. I don't know if you are already into the plates and specials back mm -hmm. when you were into reggae. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me this love of the plates? Um, yeah, 
like I always, always, always used to like like sound system, sound clashes. Like I'm from South London, so I used to support Saxon. Like I was very young then, so I didn't really go to none of the dances. But my older brother was very much into it, so I used to get all the sound tapes from Saxon, Levi, Tipper Irie, Daddy Colonel, all them man there. So I always been into it, and you know the the exclusivity of dubs. Um, it's, it's almost excited me, you know. To me, uh, that's something special to have a, 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 a famous artist calling your name, you know, against another sound or whatever. You know, to me, this, it's always been wicked. Um, back in the real, like the original jungle days, I didn't have much dubs then. I didn't really do it. And the thing is, then it was so hard and expensive to get Jamaican artists. You know, um, now. This, anybody can get it. You can go on YouTube, type in dub place, and you'll see advertisements from producers in Jamaica saying to holler, we can get all the artists, best prices. So it's easy to get now. Anybody can get them now. Um, but yeah, I was just, um, you know, just making my own dubs. Not just with reggae artists, just um, remixes of other big jungle tunes, but just doing like the remark dub mix and just making my own tunes and just having them as dubs really just uh, and I think what really pushed that as well a lot in me was <clears throat> you know the whole jungle thing after you know say from you know it died down so much the rest of the world kept it going and blah 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 all that stuff um, but to me still playing at jungle parties was making me sick to hear the same tunes over and over and over and over again like no one was really produced like I, said, I can't say no one was producing like i said you had like you know the rest of the world was still carrying the jungle flag you know america canada europe you know i was playing at parties like i say all, all them places but in the uk there was still a small scene but it was nothing to do with the sort of scene that that it come from um, and if he was at an event where it was, you know, jungle or jungle room at a drum and bass party, it's just the same tunes over and over and over again. It's just, honestly, it was just making me feel sick. It's like, I can't hear these tunes anymore. Um, so that was a part of, you know what? I need to make tunes that, new jungle tunes, okay, they still sound old school, but they're new, people, people haven't heard them before. Um, and yeah, so that was a part of, you know, really starting to just do tunes just for dubs and and just trying to have that sort of exclusivity angle, I guess. Um, but yeah, as I say, as time went on, I started to get more and more sort of Jamaican artists, mainly through uh, linking with Lion Dub, my brethren, big up Lion Dub each and every time family. Um, yeah, he linked me um, with a lot of the artists and stuff over there and that like Candyman, when I went out to Jamaica, lined up, linked me with Candyman. Um, so yeah, so from then, it was like I was just sort of spend the money and get as much as much as I can afford, really. <laughs> but yeah, that's that. Thank you. Busy, did you have like the same interest or love for dubs? Well, dub plates, dub plates for me. Dub plates for me. Uh, the other way around. Oh, sorry. <laughs> dub plates for me was like really a thing where um, I just used to like to get the records that I was producing onto um, onto vinyl, and that was kind of like the shortcut way of doing it. And the reason why I would cut a dub plate was so that I could get a sound check to hear what my uh, record would sound like on a sound system. Because before CDs came along, it was all about dub plates. That was the only way you could get to hear your song on a set, unless you put it on a cassette recorder, which wasn't as sharp as putting it on a DAT or playing it on a DAT in, in the rave. That was the only way. And we, we just used to cut dubs just to go out and, and also to distribute your tunes to the DJs to play as well. So we would go to Music House, which is one of the you know most famous places, alongside uh, JTS as well, which is another place. You'll probably find on a lot of the records, you'll see uh, JTS inscribed or the Music House label. Um, and that's where everybody used to 
used to go to network as well. And what you do is you go down to Music House with your dad, you'd see someone that you knew up there, and you'd say, oh, look, I've got this here. And, and sometimes you used to get, some of the boys used to come down and who used to cut maybe 10, 20 dubs a week, and they'd literally lock off one of the dub plate rooms for themselves, and you'd go in there and you'd play them what you had. And if they liked it, they would record it onto um, dub plate and then they would play your song out. And it was a good way of marketing your record because the more, obviously the more DJs that had your song on dub plate, the more plays you would get at the weekend. And as well as that, the DJs get something that's completely exclusive, that's not out on vinyl. It's a way, way ahead of his time. And uh, then what happened was the CD uh, element came into it. And that's when everybody basically started to save 40 odd pound a week on hmm. dub plates. And it, some, I mean, some D DJ's bills were like, some DJ was spending like nearly three, four hundred pound a week on dub plate. Probably your dub plate bill was probably going somewhere around there. The amount I'm of glad when CDs come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought that was done to my fuck you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, man, I mean, dub, that's, how dub, dub, that's what dub plates were for me. Um, it was more about just testing the, the you know the, the music and just seeing what you know where you know so you can get a sound check on your record to see how it's how it's going down it wasn't to, it wasn't so much the exclusive thing but to get a dub plate from someone that was exclusive because you know you go into a dance you big up your chest man you've got a tune that nobody's got you know what i mean and that that's that's, that's what it's about I'm a everyday junglist, I fight for survival Nobody else, I'm not gonna rival I carry yo, carry yo, carry yo
Look, it's all tagged up. The whole train. <laughs> 